civilization of Egypt and of Africa in general is the most written about and the least understood of all known subjects. This is not an accident or an error in misunderstanding the available information. Except for Egypt, African people have been written out of the respectable commentary of history. Europeans have claimed the non-African creation of Egypt in order to downgrade the position of African people in world history. They have laid the foundation of what they call Western civilization on a structure that the Western mind did not create. In doing so, they have used no logic. Egypt, a Nile Valley civilization, was already old before Europe was born. Nile Valley civilization also existed before the Western Asian civilization of the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. This fact was acknowledged for years by the European academic hypocrites who thought they had gotten away with claiming Egypt as a European or at least Asian creation. The archaeological research of Europeans disproved their claim. They cannot find a single artifact in Western Asia or in mainland Asia that was older than the artifacts of Nile Valley civilization or Africa in general. This revelation created a new dilemma for the European claimers of Egypt. They were saying, in effect, figuratively speaking, a child gave birth to himself, then he created his own mother. Before the existence of Greek sphinxes and Greek culture, Africans in the Nile Valley developed the archetypes of civilized thought which have influenced humanity for over 5,000 years. Despite numerous attempts to suppress the historical accomplishments of these ancient Africans, the truth may now be told. Many myths which were accepted as gospel but have faded into oblivion in the light of intelligent thought. At one time, men believed that the world was flat and that the planets and stars all revolved around the Earth. Some of the most damaging myths were those created in order to perpetuate the myth of the inherent inferiority of African people, so-called Negroes. This particular myth was created in the early 15th century in order to justify the enslavement of Africans who had been kidnapped by Portuguese sailors and presented as gifts to the Pope. The word Negro was changed from an adjective to a noun in order to justify a new race of people who were deemed less than human. I'm Anthony Browder, author of Exploding the Myths, Volume 1, Now Valley Contributions to Civilization. I discussed the significance of names in my first publication, From the Browder File, 22 Essays on the African American Experience, in an essay entitled the creation of the Negro. Names are important to all human beings because they link them to a specific land mass, a distinct language, history, culture, philosophy, and concept of God. For example, Europeans come from the continent of Europe. Italians come from a country in Europe called Italy. They speak Italian and they revere their cultural history. Similarly, Asians come from the continent of Asia, Chinese come from an Asian country called China. They speak Chinese dialects, and they have recorded vivid accounts of their history. People who record their history and myths take pride in the accomplishments of their ancestors. People who have their history and myths written for them are not as fortunate, particularly if they have been written out of their own history. Such is the case concerning the race of people who have erroneously been called Negroes, colored, and black. Think of the power of that myth. If one of the primary virtues of a name is to orient people to a homeland, where is there a place called Negro land, or colored land, or black land? Who are these people, and what is their story? Before the names were changed, they were called Africans, and they were the first inhabitants on this planet. Anthropologists agree that the first humans who walked the earth lived in Northeast Africa. Yes, there really was an Adam and Eve, and they lived about 150,000 years ago 
in a symbolic Garden of Eden, which is now called Kenya. These Africans have the oldest genetic roots, and they were the foreparents of every person in the world. In reality, there is only one race, the human race, which had its beginnings in Africa. Contemporary anthropologists, geneticists, and archaeologists have denounced the myths fabricated by scientists of the 19th century who were motivated by racism when they attempted to downgrade the historical significance of African people. The attacks have been vicious, and old thought patterns are sometimes difficult to change. For example, regarding people of African descent, the 1884 edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica stated that the Negro occupies the lowest position in the evolutionary scale, thus affording the best material for the comparative study of the highest anthropoids and the human species. The Encyclopedia Britannica went on to state that at the onset of puberty, the cranial sutures of the Negro close much earlier than in other races. This accounts for their arrested mental development. The significance is the story of the world's first trinity, which was written in the Nile Valley over 6,000 years ago. The trinity consists of Asar, his wife Aset, and their son Hedu. According to one condensed version of this story, Asar, the benevolent king, is murdered by his brother Set. Aset, the virgin, is later informed by a messenger that she will be impregnated by the spirit of her deceased husband. Nine months later, Aset gives birth to her son named Hedu. As an adult, Hedu battles his uncle Set and avenges the murder of his father. Hedu ascends to the throne of his father and becomes the ruler of earth. Asar is later resurrected from the grave and became the Lord of Judgment for all of the deceased. The significance of this story and Asar's role as the Lord of Judgment can be seen in a famous tomb scene entitled The Weighing of the Soul. In it, the soul of the deceased stands before two images of Ma'at, the nature who represents the principles of truth, justice, harmony, balance, reciprocity, and order. The feather in the hand of the deceased, like those in the headband of Ma'at, represents the divine attributes of Ma'at. In the next scene, the soul of the deceased is weighed opposite the feather of Ma'at on the scales of the balance. If the soul is symbolically as light as a feather, it means that he has lived a righteous life in accordance to the principles of Ma'at. The nature of Jehudi records the result of the weighing in the Book of Judgment. And Asar, who is seated on the throne of judgment, oversees all of these activities and makes the final determination as to whether the soul of that person goes to heaven or hell. Over the centuries, the image of Ma'at evolved, but the activities associated with her remained constant. Here we see Ma'at portrayed as the winged Netcher. And here we see her European counterpart, a 15th century painting of the Archangel Michael, who weighs the soul of man on the scale of Ma'at as the forces of evil tug on the opposite side of the balance. 